Alrighty, I'm still working on the HMV 102 with the black case. And I just had the battle of the ball bearings. That's the uh, 102's motor there. Everything else is done in it. It's got a brand new mainspring. Everything's clean, greased, and whatnot. Uh, but, could not get the little bearings out. Let me put that there. Yeah. Now, not everybody might realize this, and this goes for HMV, for, you know, uh, Victor, obviously, a lot of others. Inside these caps, these go on either end of your governor shaft. Inside these caps is a tiny ball bearing. It may look that small. This is early Victor. Or it may look, where's the other one? That size, oops, sorry. That size, which is a HMV and later Victor. Now, <laughs> you have to get them out. You have to get them out. They usually are stuck down in there, glued in there with old lubricant. They're not moving. They're not doing their job. If you don't get them out, they're not going to rotate properly. It's going to cause undue wear on your shaft and on the bearing. And that's just not good all the way around. You have to get them out of there. You got to get them cleaned up in there and fresh oil so that they're doing their job. So they go on either end. This is the governor. Either end of that, that shaft right there. And you also have to check to make sure, where is that one? Here. Okay, this one. You have to make sure that when they go on a shaft, they fit snug. Not sloppy and flapping around and all of that. Sometimes they'll get that way from lack of lubrication. That's not good. It's going to cause noise and it's going to cause a problem, possibly, with your motor actually spinning. It could uh, cause it to stop if it gets bad enough, because this is not properly aligned, it's flopping around, you don't want that. Now, what happened here with this HMV, and this is uh, the 102, like I said, this is the 270D motor. Now, what happened with that was that uh, it had not been lubricated in a very, very long time. And the bearings were seized inside, I mean, they were rusted, they weren't even glued in there. They were flat out rusted into the uh, the bearing caps these and i tried everything usually what i do is i put these caps into a plastic pill jar like this with some heavy duty solvent in this case white gas and then i agitate it and let it sit agitate it some more let it sit for days even usually for old lubricant that will dissolve it and they will come out not with this motor so i resorted to a spare motor this motor actually, in case anybody was interested in this, is actually out of a late 101. And it's exactly the same motor, except it will not say 270D on the bottom of it. It just says Gramophone Company. I guess later on they actually named it. That's the late style, the latest and last style of the 101's motor. After they stopped using the number 59, which is the spam can. Uh, I took the bearings out of that, had exactly the same problem could not get those little bearings out of there no matter what I did. I let it sit an entire week in solvent, occasionally coming by to agitate them and, you know, try to bang around. I put extra bearing caps in there so I had something to bang against, try to get them loose that way, and nothing was working. Finally, I resorted to the nuclear option. Basically, I took the bearing. Whoops, <laughs> they're a little magnetized. Took the bearing, held it like that, and I heated it with the propane torch while keeping it pointed at the cloth there. Heated it until it was just about red hot. Tapped it with a screwdriver on the other end. And the bearing came out. You can see we burned the cloth a little bit. The bearing finally, finally broke loose and came out. So that was done. The other one eventually did come out. Where is it? That one eventually did come out on its own. This one did not. And I had to go to the nuclear option on that one. Because they have to come out. They have to be cleaned inside there. That, uh, that little channel in there has got to be cleaned. Got to get everything out of there. And then the heat cleans it very nicely, actually. And we got it done. But that has to be done. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to properly operate your motor. I, mean, I know the temptation is just to leave it in there and spray some oil and call it good. But you can't do that. Now, I suspect a lot of times I only have this problem on 102 motors and I think the reason for this is that it's a more complex operation to get the motorboard off with the 101 it's four screws 
take the turntable off. So if, if you have an auto brake, you take two screws on that, you take that off, and the motor board lifts right out. You flip it over, you oil up your motor, you put it back in, it takes maybe 20 minutes. With the 102, you have to take the entire board out. This, I saw, I demonstrated this in the last video. A lot of screws, there's a clamp, uh, everything. And then you have the motor inset around the horn, which you, you either remove the horn assembly, which is two screws, you lift it out and get access to the motor, or you drop the motor out with the four screws and the spacers, and you can have access to the whole motor that way. Now, when this thing sits in the motorboard, in the machine, you can see this hole and this hole. Or maybe it's just this one, I forget. And you could put some, you could see this, the shift. And you could see this. Now, this lubricates your winding crank, your, your not return spring, all of that stuff. Same thing here, that's for the gear on the winding crank, winding handle if you prefer. A little bit here, but that only lubricates the top of this shift. There is a bearing down here that needs to be lubricated. And it's not gonna penetrate all the way down there to get to that. You must have access to the motor for that. Same thing for in here and in here. And now, you're not gonna be able to get to these caps from up here. That's not gonna happen. You can put some oil here, and that'll make its way down to the friction leather eventually, which is oh good, at least you get some on there. That's not gonna lubricate anything else on the governor. Just the friction leather and maybe a little bit of the brass disc here. So you have to take the motor out to do it. I think a lot of times that's simply not getting done or wasn't done back in the day and probably isn't getting done today. It certainly was not done on this motor, which was supposed to have been fully serviced or so. It was labeled and the owner was told it was not. This is a critical part of a service. It has to be done. If it's not done, and yeah, it's time consuming. And like I said, you do have to take the motor out. But it has to be done to have a proper job. You must do this. These bearings must be out. I probably mentioned this before. And the extreme examples like this are why, when I see something like this. That was absolutely not. And what will happen eventually, this shaft and this cup will start to wear. And now your, your governor is trying to do this when it's unwinding in there or it gets cockeyed in the shaft. I've seen it. And it causes a lot of noise, too, and other damage. So lubricate it and clean them properly when you service the motor. You know, you got to do that. But I'm going to put all this back together. The motor is done. That's ready to go back in the machine, but I still have other things to do. I got to swap out the handle. I have to inspect a few little other things. And of course, I am working on the reproducer. You know, I haven't had time yet to mess with that too much, but I will get to that. We'll have this machine back up and running. Now, but the motor, that's all done. No other surprises, really. All the gears look good. Uh, the spring was a little weak, so I put a brand new one at the customer's request. I did put a brand new spring in there, and um, mainspring. Everything's been taken out and cleaned. That also includes this. This is your, uh, and this is what it usually looks like, a mess. This is your winding handle gear in here, assembly. This is what winds your mainspring. A lot of hardened grease gets in there, and the temptation is to leave it alone because, ah, that's not really under any major pressure, but you know what? It, it turns so much smoother if it's clean. So yeah, it's not hard to do. You take this screw out, this lifts off, that punches down through there, or up actually. The gear comes out, that's greased. Let me show you when it's not greased. You'll see it better. That gear comes, will pop right out of that clasp, clasp right there. Over here on the back, you have a clip. You have a little wire clip on there, and you pop that off with a screwdriver carefully so not to lose it. And then this pushes right out. That shaft comes right out, put the winding handle on it, give it a little tug with some penetrating oil. There is a small thin washer down here in the bottom. Don't lose it, and make sure you put it back on. And that's it. You scrub it, you clean the gears, you clean the channel, you clean that all up nice. Reapply fresh grease, plenty of it. Don't spare the grease, put it right in there good because it's probably not going to be touched again for 50 years unless you do the machine yourself. To get that uh, clip back on, mind you, when this is done, the, the motor's apart. You have the motor apart. You push down, oh, let me see, on, on a hard surface like that, just keeping pressure on the end of the, the shaft there when it's back in, and you find a quarter-inch drive socket and an extension that fits over, over that shaft right there on the end, it's over that, and you just give it a gentle tap, pop, and that spring will pop right back on there. Don't 
lose it. That's the important part. That will be hard to find unless you have a bunch of parts motors like I do. But that has to be done. It was not done on this one either. As a matter of fact, nothing was really cleaned on this, including the mainspring. It was given what we call a flea market rebuild. That's when somebody takes a can of WD-40, probably stuck the nozzle down in here or something, spray it around to take, take care of some of its death screams and uh, call it good. That's not how you do it. If you want to play the machine, look, if you don't want to play the machine and you're not going to, it's just going to sit on a shelf on display, then why bother? You can leave it. Don't, don't do any of this. But if you're going to play records, you want it to operate correctly. And so you need to do this. You need to take it apart, clean it properly, put it all back together with fresh lubrication, and off to the race as you go. And the lubrication you use, as long as it's a good grade of grease, it doesn't matter. You like to use the original formula, which was equal parts uh, Vaseline and flake graphite. Go ahead. Dirty, but it works. Uh, it may dry out a little quicker than the modern lubes. You can use white grease. You can use molly. Whatever you got. Whatever you got. This is not a transmission in a car or an internal combustion engine or something under high pressure all the time. So you have a little bit more leeway on the kind of lubricants you can use. You want to use uh, a medium-grade oil in here and places like that, wherever there's a pivot. Make sure you lubricate this. I have seen some 102 motors and 101s that this hadn't been lubricated so long it was frozen. It was frozen. It wasn't moving. That has to move so you can adjust your speed. And as that friction leather wears, you will, over time, have to adjust your speed. This one has a good friction leather. Some 102s will have a felt pad there. That's perfectly adequate. It works, but you're probably going to have trouble finding a felt pad to replace it when it wears. But a Victor style, uh, where is my example? This. This is the material. This is leather. You clip off a little piece of this, and you clamp it back in there, and it's good to go. You don't want a big piece, just, just about what you see there, about that size, that does it. And what is this, you ask? This is a Singer sewing machine leather belt, an early Singer sewing machine. They sell these on eBay. They're like seven feet long or whatever they are. Lifetime supply. You don't have to worry about it. You can clip off whatever you need, and it's cheap, and that fits your brake, and it fits your friction leather. That's what you want to use. There's nothing mysterious or special about that material. It's just round leather belt. That's it. That's what everybody in the industry uses. On um, pretty much every phonograph, they all have a friction leather somewhere. There is a smaller friction leather used on Victor for some of the, uh, what do you call it, the, the, the gauges, the ones that have the, 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 the gauge. It tells you the speed, and then it starts at zero, and it goes up. You can just you know kind of carve one of those bigger ones down, and that works too. But there we go. That's the importance of taking care of your governor bearings. And if you play the machine, like I said, make sure you properly oil the motor. A couple times a year, you pop that open, take them, you'll get used to it. After you've done it a few times, it'll, it'll be second nature. Pop that uh, motorboard out, flip it over, take off the two screws to remove the horn from the motorboard so you have full access and properly grease and oil all the bearing points and you know anything that uh, friction it has friction against another piece of metal you, you oil it or grease it or both that way your machine will last another hundred years and your great-grandchildren will be able to play it and you gotta make sure you do that these are mechanical devices they must be properly lubricated and there you go did I cover everything? Oh, yeah. You probably want to get yourself something like this. This is a clock oiler, but it works for uh, it works for um, phonograph motors, too, or any small device. I buy these all the time at, like, uh, flea markets, tag sales, you know, whenever I see one. Sometimes they come with oil in them. And, uh, or you can buy them online. They're not hard to find. This, this long little shaft here makes it very convenient for getting it to places just like these bearings. All right, there you go.